So we're gonna have to look at that draft and try and find the magical rabbit to come out of the hat to keep Norway deeper in this tournament. Ooh. I didn't really uh, think of that one, really, because uh, I didn't expect it. That's Mali on Frisian. Frisian Marshes. And that I'm th that's very cozy for Mongols. Yes. Wow. <laughs> this is a okay, tough so, part. <laughs> so I'm going to be picking Malians because yeah. you will be picking China and Delhi. But you will be picking Malians because I will be picking China and Delhi, and therefore I'm going to be picking Mongols. I think, so we've still got Gorge and we've still got Coastal. Realistically, the more likely outcome is that Baltian was saving Chinese for uh, Coastal, and then you can play Delhi on Gorge, right? Or I know he's sometimes like Ottoman, so that's mm. like the alternative Gorge. But like on the other side, it's a bit tricky, right? Like I, I don't think Rahman necessarily drafted wrong here, because you know, if you could play Joan. We, we saw some really yes. cool Joan all-in builds. Joan versus Mongols is kind of a peculiar one, though, because if they're able to get Keshix online, Joan can struggle. Mm. But that does inherently require trade. So, so what does he have that I mean, goes deeper? I mean, to be fair, like on mm. Frisian, right, what we have seen at times, if you can actually make it past the Dark Age Spearman shenanigans, um, potentially with a spawn on Frisian Marshes, you can have very close gold on, on the map. Right. And <laughs> the thing, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the bright light. It's a harsh, harsh day in Norway for Rahman. But if he can find his way through to that game four, that game five, we have got the Delhi versus Joe matchup, something that could be the magic that sparks Norway back into this, but has to begin here. Game number three, Baltoon on match point. Calm, cool, and collected. Rahman needs to find a way to hold back the aggression and throw Baltoon off the script. For sure. And uh, we actually do see here, he's only built four houses, which do and he's still collecting wood. So he, he knows what is going on. He knows what's happening, right? We saw briefly the scouting path of Baltune there with the Khan actually went forward, right? Knows exactly where that gold is. Look at the golds, though. Yeah. This is the brutal situation. You mentioned there is a very small percentile chance of getting that retracted gold. Sometimes mm. it's stone instead. Rahman instead is going to have to fight tooth and nail for the fabled gold. I tried to one. Oh, I tried to clunk one. But yeah. Um, Another thing that's kind of scary here is like, it won't matter immediately, but long term, Mongols should get more food off the inherent pull on the sheep. Obviously, Malians can actually just go into the, the cows, but the reality is like, that should be the staple, right. right? With the Ford Golds. So, one thing that is worth noting, he actually, he actually delayed his barracks. He placed yeah. it, and then he didn't build it. But look, he's gold now. Yeah. Like, this is the redundant point. Like, this is usually why it feels a bit weird to do this, because now you have less Donzos initially. Your opponent has more spears. I think it's scary as well, because like the reason this is so favored for Mongols is Marlins will run out of wood quickly because they spend 30 wood and they pay 10 extra per spear. Mongols have passive production with the stone coming in. The other crazy part you have to remember is Mongols, they don't need to build a lumber camp. Yep. They just start on the tree line. They never run out of wood. Um, Vodka, could you click on the Raman's TC so we can see the range of the TC in terms of the houses? Okay, so uh, he can repair the bottom house. Strictly speaking, without yes. taking villager damage. And the villagers are going to go straight off the outpost. Now, Baltoon, uh, reluctant to cancel. He does it a little bit late, so he does lose some resources, but that should oh, be an easy villager it. pick. One down. Brutal, though. That's going to be pretty brutal. I mean, he will make up for it in terms of cows later on, but it's now that counts, right? And You're kind of living in dreamland there. That's a long way away. Look, look, I'm, I'm not biased. I'm trying not to be. But we, we do have Donzos. I mean, they're still doing a pretty good job. And we'll see, like, the torch happen now. He's actually going to be able to get a couple of torches. It's good. Um, okay, Valton. So either he doesn't believe in it anymore or he's got what he wants. Because you have yes. to remember, this is a lot of Donzos. Raman should kind of calm down now. The outpost has been stopped. He should think there can't be really many more spears coming. Yes, it, it's a big push and pull game at this point, right? Who is going to be stopping producing first? Yeah. And it should be Baltim, right? Defender's advantage is huge here for, uh, for Ramen as well, right? Just multiple factors for that, right? Donzos have their uh, ranged javelin throw, which does deal melee damage, which, again, right, did actually help a little bit in that previous fight when he was able to snipe a... Uh, this a, is uh, a spearman, but now he's still going to be putting on a pressure on Baltoon's. This role. is feigned, uh, like feigned fullback, by the way. Baltoon went for double production mm -hmm. again. So Raman, I, uh, this is pretty genius. I've seen a few players do this. Like Louis was renowned for doing this. He got up to like 20, 30 spears and just send it, right? Yep. I don't think Baltoon's going to go that far, but you should be able to get some harsh damage in here. Deny around the goal, maybe take out the pit mine. Raman now ready for the trade. Oh, oh no. 
the pain point has arrived. Baltun applies enough pressure to force the Saharan trade network out of ramen. I don't necessarily think it's bad. I mean, we have seen... Um, I mean, I'm the wrong one to stream. We have seen cockpits on this map, right? So it's not completely out of the window to think of um, to think of trade on this map. Like, so you actually can use the passive of the landmark. How, how many games did the cock win? None. Because uh, <laughs> usually it got kind of like, it got cock blocked by attack, right? Yeah. And Mongols like to attack. Uh, I know you, I'm sorry, I'm being Mr. Listen, Negative. Listen, I'm trying to have some copy of America. But, I mean, but here's a, here's another issue, right? It's like, uh, Raman actually did pull a villager to repair the house mm -hmm. after it was caught on fire. Yes. So, he has now gotten, he's going to be getting three bounties. So he's gotten... Oh, God. He's gotten out 150 resources. And switches over. Remember, these and houses have less health. Yeah. I mean, they, they used to have even less. Yeah, remember that? I remember that. Yeah. Oh, and he actually managed to do a little bit of a bug there. It's unfortunate, but he actually did. He done the torch the, hell, right? Yeah. yeah it, it happens, unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah. It doesn't even necessarily intentional. Which is why we Can I disqualify? <laughs> All right. But he, he playing Marlians. <laughs> he's Norwegian. And now you're asking if you can disqualify the Swedish person. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Maybe we'll give him a get. <laughs> no, this, is, this is brutal, though. Like, the reality is you have to read this for what it is. You mm. lost a lot of resources because the exchange, like, Baltoon got something out of this while you lost houses. The real pain point, though, is the trade network means you just sacrifice 75 resources a minute, potentially ad infinitum. And your opponent's now going silver trade. And wheelbarrow. So, and with this, right, we, we spoke about trade on this map in general and how it is usually countered with aggression. Um, Malians don't really like going warrior scouts and sofas in feudal. Like no. yeah, you can war yeah you can warrior scout, but it's not going to be able to. It's going to put pressure on the trade, but it's never going to be able to take down the trade. The, the bigger issue to that is because you can't do those because it's cash eggs, yes. right? Your thought is yeah, but Donzo javelins. Oh my god, OP feudal units. The problem is, and you know this is a Malian player. Mm -hmm. You're a happy little camper. Mm. You know, you like to just sit in your choke points, you throw all your javelins, and you middle finger the invaders, and they leave, right? It's a bit different when you have to walk out into the open, you know? It, it's like, there's a difference between throwing a pot noodle at Ty Mike Tyson's head from, like, a stand where he can't identify you, and walking up to him in person and challenging him to a fight. Yeah. And that's what worries me, is if you come out into this open playing field, especially riding blind through these stealth forests, what's waiting for you? As of right now, not much. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we look intimidatingly at the pastures. This is like Bleh. pastures. Bang. Maybe we've but got the exploding one thing sheep model. That is worth noting. Uh, Ram doesn't have uh, the upgrade. He's done so far not upgraded right now. He's finally right. Yeah, yeah, he's coming through now. The pressure continues. I, I respect this from Baltian. Like, he's seeing an opportunity to just keep ramping this up. He wants to try and force more commitment out of Ramen. So. You need to do a switch now. Roman has been able to scout this because he's been busy at home just trying to, you know, put put up the defenses. Survive, yeah. so, so he doesn't actually know the fact that there's archers incoming at this point. And he is actually double producing them and producing them at the same time. So he's busy just cow booming, which, yes. Thumbs yes. up, very nice, yeah. But you're making, ma point. you're making donsos into archers now. Wait, and you're not, even making, you're, you're not even making donsos. Like, like you're just sitting back at home, so you need to do a switch. He's going to be able to do a panic switch with javelin throwers and fall back on the uh, Sultanian trade network. Or so that yeah. was the wrong tip, but the um, the trade tower for a little bit. But when that ha the Saharan, <laughs> Saharan. <laughs> you have to right. Sultani Saharan. Sorry. By the way, and they done that with the two sieves that came out at the same time. Yeah. Very confusing. But the, the yeah, brutal see, thought no. here. Here's a thought though. In honor of Dragovan against the other Norwegian. If he goes javelins, you could just clown car this. Yeah, you could. He's trying to cow him, right? Um, like, that's the only gold he can access. And we have the creeping point. Outpost now on the way. Raman is at least two ranches in, but he needs, what, probably three, four more minutes? And that's if he doesn't have to commit Ooh. hard into javs. Ooh, Odka, good catch. Look at where Bolton is trading to. You cheeky son of a gun. This is max. <laughs> power. And, and he can do this so... He can sort of do this so confidently, right? He knows exactly what is going on. He knows that Raman is just locked in his face. It's doubly and smart because now Raman, he sees it, right? So, like, a scout's not going to get a kill here. No. So now you have to either allow it or come out your base and lose your biggest advantage. How's this go? 
disgusting. And it is going to be the Ram shenanigans. Look at it. It's on the way. Now, it's not quite clown carring. Mm, he might yet. just use them like they're intended. Maybe. So, I mean, I mean, Raman is doing a pretty decent job at the current position of actually holding. The issue is that there's nothing to hold just yet, right? The, the pressure really is not yet. And he, he needs to die for this villager, but he's just going to be able to tap the tower. 126 <gasps> gold. And 13 food. That's true. <laughs> not bad. Aristot's already on the way. And by the way, he pumped, I think it was six. He went up to actually, he's almost seven of them. I think he's at six right now. Like he immediately pumped them. Mm. That, that was in less than a minute. He just regurgitated them out. Like the other scary thing here is it's not just the Ram factor. Because you're now behind on gold, you can't afford blacksmith techs. Steeled arrow means that this archer count can actually beat the javelins. <laughs> the wolves on that trade post has done more eco damage than Raman. So Wolf Whisperer <laughs> has a comeback arc. Are those Norwegian wolves I see? Um, let's not get into that political discussion because of wolves in Norway. There's uh What? <laughs> it's a it's it's a heated thing. But now Ram's coming through now, gonna be doing easy work off these houses. Remember again, right? The houses for Malians they have they only give five wood uh pop space, but they're also cheaper and they also have pop they have health. Yeah, they so get shunted to burn in two hits, right? Yes. So like a ram, I think it can return its cost in it's something like 40 seconds by just hitting yeah. houses. And as, as well, normally it's like, okay, you don't actually want to ram the, uh, you don't actually want to ram the pit mine that much because it's like, oh no, it's just pit mine and it's just passive income and all you have so much passive income. But you need a different landmark firing that passive income, right? And behind this, yes, he has a lot of cows that is actually happening on this cow boom. But it's not enough. Like, it, it's not going to pop off properly until Castle Age hits. You have to remember, it's even worse than how it normally feels for a Malian player because you're missing that 75 gold from mm. Atlanta. Like, it sounds nitpicky, but it's actually a big deal in situations like this. That can be the, the backbreaker, the difference, especially now that Valtoon is adding in Keshik's. Archer count is still continuing to swell up, and Steeled Arrow is indeed now on the way. Yep, Steeled Arrow coming through now. Javelin numbers isn't looking too bad from uh, from Roman here as well, right? And mm -hmm. I was about to I was about, I was about to say something. Bolton Something's hasn't missing added here. Kashyyyk. Yeah. Bolton has not added Kashyyyk yet, which is holding or helping Roman in the situation. But now he's actually coming through with those Kashyyyks, and there's not enough javelin throwers to actually be one shotting um, the archers. I think at this point. And well, we do have a little bit of an attack here on the um, double outpost. I, again, right? Normally, this wouldn't be that bad. But against be Rams no, already. No, no. This normally wouldn't be that bad because it would have the passive stone income to actually mm. upgrading these two. Yeah. It, it's not something that you would have the presence of mind or necessarily the the room to actually do. But it's not a possibility right now. What scares me is Undermesh is now being prepped. And this is yep. where the dive is more persistent, especially the Keshit count about to eclipse the Donzo count. So Raman kind of has a, a tough little streak ahead of him here, right? Like, yes, you could probably get what you need for Castle Age, but what you really need is a lot more units because Baltoon has ramped up again. It's not just the food anymore. It's the wood as well. This is the creme de la creme, right? Mass the Keshiks, and then later on, this gives you additional archers as well. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> this is, this so is rough bold. as well right now. He needs to move out. He's actually... He, he's, he's thinking he might be in a little bit of a confident position just due to the fact that hey okay there's a lot of trade going on so we must have put a lot into resources into that but he's gotten so much back because of that mm -hmm. that now he needs to i mean he needs to hold this posi position as much as possible and it's really really hard to do especially when there's rams and this amount of uh, archers um i think we are up to the number that they should be able to one shot the archers he does get a decent bra brace here, so he does get a Keshik, but look at the Donsons. They're just... They're gone. Yeah, they're, they're the Undermesh is allowed to dive now. These yep. double outposts don't really affect him anymore. Keshik's just kind of body blocking the retreat as well, so Javs have to stand their ground, but this Ram is doing the real business, the win condition. Once those outposts are down, Raman is once again going to be out of gold. Yeah, and he can't, he can't really move further, right? Because then you need to actually be moving so far that you're actually hitting the trade line. Yep. And now your trader are working on scouts. And that this is just brutal, right? Ram is just losing his entire army. He's down, he's going to be down to zero, um, zero uh, military now, any second now. There's nothing left here. Raman, actually, uh, the whole eco's dead. He was down yeah. to five in the end. So GG gets called. Norway will be, uh, I believe, our first nation fully eliminated out of the player pool here. Sweden continues strong. They need to. They've only got what? Wait, they've got two. What? Yeah, they've got two. Pseudo two. <laughs>
<laughs> one and a half. Let's go with one and a half. We've still got four nations representing here in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, checks out. but kind of a brutal one, right? I think, you know, Rahman, we, had, we saw some potential. We saw yes. some signs of life. I, I feel part of this is maybe... It almost felt partially drafting. I, I want to say Baltoon just kind of had every box ticked from what we saw mm. there. Yeah. It, it, it's been a consistent... Uh, and remember as well, um, if I did the code correctly, mm -hmm. that middle that economy count should actually be counting cows as well, I think. <laughs> really? I think so. And, and look at this, Baltoon as well, right? 42 eco killed. Yeah. I, I, I mean, a little bit of it was at the end, but... <laughs> I think it was just a stroke of genius as well. Mm. Like, you know, the mistake we see people make with Silver Tree, they build it and they just start building it one or two trades straight away. Yep. That's such, such a pain point when you're the aggressor. I love that he hard delayed and then pumped five to six straight away and you saw the immediate return. It's a surge point that comes online so quick because if you trickle traders, your opponent sees it, they get time to react. Yep. Five, six, seven, eight traders, it's so quick you don't have time to flip the script. And, you know, the Malian trend of uh, suffering against the Mongols seems to continue here. I mean, it's interesting because I, I think I mentioned, like, Malians didn't feel like the, the best Civ with the current map pool. And I think we're kind of seeing that as a trend. I don't think the win rate is very impressive here.